Hello viewers, welcome back again. Thanks for your continuous support and interactive comments for making this channel quite interesting. Many of you had requested for more videos to cover up the Kaple programming. I am trying to focus on selective Kaple functions in each videos. In that way, in this video we will be covering up two Kaple functions which are specific to diagnostics, which are diaxit parameter and diaxin request. I will be explaining you the purpose of diaxit parameter and diaxin request functions. Firstly, to make you understand under which context you can use these functions, followed by a live demo as usual. So, before we get into the video, please hit the subscribe button if you would like to get more notification on future videos. Okay, let's get started. Let us first see the use case under which we will be using these diagnostic capital functions. The context here is you need to write a capital code to perform a diagnostic request to either write or read a specific DID, which is nothing but the diagnostic identifier. Let's assume you have a DID which is of 1518 with a data size of 1 byte and you wanted to write this DID with some values, example with the value 01 during the start of your test case. For this kind of use cases, you can follow two methods. The first method is by sending the data in byte by byte in your capital code, which doesn't need any .cdd file, but the code length will be high and you will be having some limitations while you go for a bigger programs. The second method is by calling this diac functions through diac set parameter function calls which needs a .cdd file, but the benefit is your code length will be optimal and will be best suited for bigger programs. So in this video, we will be looking into the second method in detail with a live example. We will see what is diaxit parameter. It's a diagnostic inbuilt capital function, which is used to set or write a value in a sub parameter of a diagnostic object. And the syntax for this function is here. The function itself will return a data type of long and it takes three arguments which are diag request, parameter name and new value. Here diag request object refers to diagnostic object instance and parameter name refers to the sub parameter of the diagnostic object whose data type is a character and the new value refers to the right value in the sub parameter of the diagnostic object whose data type is numerical by defining this function we are making your diag write request ready for your respective did diag send request it's a function used to send the request object to the ECU. The syntax for this diaxin request is here. The return type of this diaxin request is of data type long and it takes only one argument which is the diag request object instance. Here the diag request object, it refers to the diag object which we had earlier created with a new value to be written in the sub parameter. And now we are going to send that request through this function. So once the diag send request is executed, this function will send the write request, which is 2E151801 to the ECU. And this is how it works. Let me show you a live demo of this particular code. Go to the start menu and open your respective Keno version, whatever you had already installed in your PC. And once if this application is opened, um, go to the diagnostics ISOTP, which is a, a, which is a precondition for this particular use case. Um, so here you need to have a .cdd file linked already. Um, so I have made a separate video for this, uh, how to make this CDD file from uh, Canva Studio. And at the same time, if you already have a .cdd file and if you wanted to link it, uh, I also made a separate video for how to link the, the .cdd file uh, to this diagnostics isotp configuration so please do refer that um, so in this particular case let me assume that you already have a .cdd file and 
you had already linked it over here so after the linking uh, just make a note of this ecu qualifier i'll come back to this particular point like why i stress this particular topic okay so once if you have linked this dot cdd file and if you click it okay then obviously you will have all this diagnostics console and fault memory and sessions control with that particular panels getting appeared so in this case uh, let me select this particular one like uh, um, it's a diag diagnostic console so which is already open and uh, the use case that we are going to see is that uh, we already have a DID which is 1518 uh, we have a right option here and this particular DID uh, is of uh, one byte uh, size and uh, in this particular use case we are going to write this with some value like 01 or 00 and then we are going to check it through capital code uh, instead of manually doing it over here so this is the use case and uh, here uh, the key functions what we are going to use is the diag set parameter uh, and then the diag send request so these are the two functions that we are going to use it um, specifically for this particular use case uh, let me go to this uh, configuration again uh, go to the test and uh, test setup this is where uh, i had already linked one dot uh, can file which is an empty file uh, I'm, and we are going to write some code uh, in that particular can file which is over here and then we are going to see like how this code works how this uh, diag set parameter or diag send request is working i will see it okay let me open this um, diag console parallelly with this uh, code okay uh, so whenever you open the uh, empty dot can file you will see these sections like includes variables and um, avoid main test and this is where you use to write the functions and variables you will declare the variables and so on so let me start off with some basic functions so in the main test i'm going to write the uh, function call which is uh, nothing but i'm going to give it as a fu diac function so this is a function name i had given so for this particular function name i wanted to maybe either you can directly put it over here or you or even you can right click and you can add this function say for example i'm going to add this in the test cases like right click and then create new test case and this is where you can write this tag function as a name so this is the name of the test case and uh, here uh, at first when you wanted to access so you, you're going to access this particular diag um, cdd file for that you have a separate code for it like uh, i'm just going to write it so zero which is equal to equal to diag set target and uh, in the diag set target i'm going to give the name of the ec qualifier which I had mentioned to you here okay in the configuration I mentioned to you um, to remember this one so this is the ECU qualifier so this is the name that you have to give or call uh, at the start of your code so that uh, your CDD file will be linked to this code and then okay this is just a uh, just in case if if this call is not working or link is not working so you can uh, do an error message or print an error message okay now i had already called or i linked it so now i'm just going to have a test wait for timeout function i'm going to add a delay of uh, say just five seconds just for this use case okay so and then i'm going to call this diag set parameter so as i mentioned earlier so diag set parameter it takes three parameters or three arguments uh, for that um, we need to first define or link this uh, this particular did so uh, let us just declare this um, um, object firstly for that you need to write Diag request and then 
as soon as you write this diag request uh, if your cdd file is successfully linked you will have all this uh, um, diagnostic target will be listed so let me and then dot and then this is where you will also have the option of uh, choosing the did which you really looking for so here uh, what i'm looking for is did for uh, um, 1518 so it is listing down as read and write so let me first choose this as uh, write okay and uh, for this one i'm going to create an object called write underscore did uh, underscore 0x1518 so this is an object that i have created for the for the write did the similar way that i'm going to create the same for the read as well so okay so this is read and uh, here i'm going to create a different object instance for uh, read function so now i had uh, created two objects uh, object instance for this uh, uh, write and um, read diag request and now i can call this function over here so write underscore did or I would copy and put it over here, okay. And um, comma, and here is where the second argument is nothing but the uh, sub parameter. So the sub parameter for this write is nothing but the byte one. So I'm going to name it as uh, byte one, okay, comma, and then our, the numerical value, the third argument is nothing but the numerical value. So I'm going to give it as uh, zero okay so now uh, i had uh, now defined this uh, diag set parameter with uh, with the object of the diagnostic request and then with the byte the sub parameter with uh, byte one and i have written the value as zero zero firstly and um, the next one is that after we prepare this one where we can send this through diag send request Okay, so DAX and request is a function that we have will be using it to send this particular uh, function to the ECU. So what we are going to send has nothing but this particular object. So now this object is already written with the sub function with value 00. Now this particular object is will be sent to the ECU by this function DAX and request. Okay. Now after sending this, I'm going to wait for some duration. So let me add a short delay here, like uh, for example, three seconds to see how it is getting reflected. And uh, and then I, I'm going to write another, func uh, another function called uh, DAC send. Yeah, DAC send request for the read. So the value that I have written it, whether it is getting reflected in the ECU or not, I wanted to read it and verify it. So I'm going to add this object. And then I'm going to give a short delay of uh, three seconds, for instance. Okay. Okay, now the code is ready. I feel like, yes. Um, we don't need any other code uh, in order to check this. So let us just compile it once. Check it whether it is uh, error free. Yes, it is error free. There is no compilation errors. So let us just go to the code now. Sorry, to the configuration. And now it is already linked. Yes, it's already linked. I'm going to run this configuration right away. Now this function is active. I'm going to run it. Let me run it. And here you will be able to see the request has been sent as um, 2E1518 with value 00, 00 is the first right request. And of course, I got a negative response at the first instance because it is 78. It's nothing but the uh, response pending. And after that, again, we got a successful uh, uh, 6E1518, uh, which is a positive response. And after which, I uh, we did a read request like 221518. Uh, and when we read it, the value is read as um, six, we got a positive rec uh, response as 621518 with value 00. So this is the value that it has been written. Now let me change this value as, uh, um, as some other value like um, instead of 1, uh, instead of 0, let us write it as uh, 1 and see like how it behaves. Okay. And I'm going to add some stop command 
to to stop the measurement soon after this execution is done so let me just run so now this time we'll be writing the value as 1 okay here you see it's like uh, 2e1518 with the value as 01 and of course we got a positive response and when we read this um diagnostic request or did again uh, like 221518 we got a positive res uh, response as 62158 uh, with the value as 01 so it means that this code is working so all you have to do is first you have to uh, make sure that you have a proper cdd file linked and you have uh, linked that uh, ec qualifier with uh, by calling this dag or uh, uh, the name the respective ec qualifier at the start and then um, finally uh, you just need to um, write the dag set parameter for your um, required dids uh, you can you can create um those many uh, dag objects and then you can write these values um as you see uh, the code is very less in order to perform these operations you don't need to go for the method one uh, unless or otherwise you, you you don't really find a way to uh, have a dot cdd file only then you can go for the first method the second method is quite easy that you could uh, send this request quite soon and you can uh, use it in your uh, precondition or uh, to do a configuration in your test code With that, uh, we had come to the conclusion of this video. Hope you got an insight about how to use the DAX set parameter and uh, DAX and request functions in your Capel programming. Uh, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos which are about to come. Thank you, and uh, see you again in another video.